I want to give honor to God, who is definitely the head of my life. I want to give honor to my wife. Amen. 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 We honor you. We salute you. We love you. We adore you. We appreciate you. Love you, baby. Amen. Just left the hospital a little while ago. Uh, have to go in for the next 14 days to receive a was it IV treatment. And I tell you, we have been through. I tell you, we've been through. And I want to bless you today with the word of God, and I will give you all that I have. If I, if I get a little weak, I understand that I am in recovery. Uh, but I'm here today to defy the enemy. I'm here today to glorify God. And I'm here today to preach a message entitled Strong Faith. Somebody say, I've got to have strong faith. I want to look at Luke, the 22nd chapter, verse 31 to 34. Number one, I want to bless you with some truths that I don't think many of us may be aware of. Number one, Satan desires to test certain believers. Satan desires to test, key word, certain believers. And when I talk about Satan, I'm talking about Satan himself. I'm talking about Lucifer himself. And he desires to test certain believers. And I want to tell you what kind of believers. Number one, believers who impact others. Freedom Church, I want you to understand is this year we declared that this was a year of transformation. I am now learning that when you declare transformation, you get the attention of the enemy. When you declare that you are going to evolve into something greater than you've been before, you come up on the devil's radar. When you become somebody who impacts others, then you become a believer who influences others, a believer who is consistent, and then believers who are faithful. And this is a short list. This is a short list. Many people go through and they think they're being tried by the devil, but most of us are not being tried by the devil. Most of us are just reaping what we've sowed. Now you need to hear me today because there's a fundamental difference between being tried by the devil himself personally and reaping what you've sown. I want to tell you, here's a warning today. If you continue to grow in your faith, you will attract the attention of Satan himself. Now you may need to make a decision to say, I don't think I want to grow anymore. I don't think I want to be a part of this transformation thing. I don't think I want to continue to follow God. I don't think I want to continue to pursue him because I'm discovering in my life that the more you pursue God, the higher you come up on the devil's radar because you become a threat to the enemy. Somebody say, I want to be a threat. I want to be a threat to the enemy. I want to tell you how to get on Satan's radar just in case you're interested. Just in case I got some bold believers. Just in, just in case I got some bout it, bout it Christians. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 tells you how to get on the devil's radar. It says, therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast. I like that. Be immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord. Watch this. Always doing your best. Watch this. And doing more than is needed. That just disqualified 90% of the church. The Bible said, if you want to get on the devil's radar, be one of these people. Be somebody who's continually aware that your labor, even to the point of exhaustion. Folks, you're going to get tired sometimes. If, you, if you're doing this thing right, if you're really walking right, if you're really living right, you're going to have some times of exhaustion. But I'm telling you, you're right where you need to be because in the Lord, there is not futile nor wasted. It is never without a purpose. Somebody say everything. I do for God has a purpose. Number two, number two, now hold your seat for this one. Number two, God allows Satan to test certain believers. Now, I might get some pushback if you don't know that. I got some believers that know that already, though. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. God, God, Jehovah Jireh, God himself will allow Satan to test certain believers. Job chapters 1 and 2 tells us that God allowed Satan to severely test Job. We know in Job that the devil went to God and said, I want to test him. 
I want to try him. I want to see what he's made of. And you know in that story, Job lost his children. He lost his servants. He lost his wealth. His wife told him to curse God and die. And you need to know that that could not have happened. Hear me, church. That could not have happened if God did not allow it. Somebody better hear me today. See, a lot of this stuff we're blaming on the devil. It might be God that has signed off on you for this test. If you thought you were going to be somebody who was not going to be tested, you thought wrong. Because let me tell you something, God will allow his best to accept the test. God will allow his strongest to accept the test. God will say yes to the devil's request because God knows you got what it takes. Now you might not know because sometimes you don't know what you're going to do until you go through something. Oh, you see, God also allowed Satan to afflict the apostle Paul. Now, Paul was one of God's best disciples, and he allowed him to afflict Paul with the illness, watch this church, that would not go away. Now, you love God, but do you love God enough to be inflicted with an illness that will never go away? To be inflicted with an illness that no matter how much you pray, you don't get better. No matter how much you fast, you don't get better. The enemy attacked my body four weeks ago. And I started seeking God, trying to figure out what was going on because I'm a man of faith. I pray for people, for them to be healed. And I said, God, I declare your healing. I decree I am healed. And the more I prayed, the worse I got. The more I prayed, the worse I felt. The more I prayed, the more the enemy attacked. And I had to have a talk with God because I began to question what was going on and I said God what is happening why is it why is this thing not moving off of me why is the enemy I got a strong hold on me and you're not coming in to rescue me and God said this to me God said you say you wanted a transformation God said you wanted to go to the next level God said you said you trust me God said your faith ain't nothing if you can't trust me when I don't answer your prayers your faith ain't nothing if you can't say yes to me when I don't do what you asked me to do God said your faith has to be proven because if it's not proven it's full of fiction if it's not proven it's full of fantasy and I need you to know this because I don't know I don't know many pastors have that have taught this that you may have to go through some things that you may have to live with until the day you die full of faith so that's why you got to understand that when you pray for something to happen, if it doesn't happen, you got to keep believing in God. If you pray for somebody to be healed and they die, you can't stop believing in God because God is still God at the end of the day. God allows us to pray and ask, but God knows what's best and God don't make no mistakes. You hear me? Sometimes we want to be used by God, but we want to be used by God our way. We want to be used by God, but we still want to look good in the process. We want to be used by God, but we want to hold on to our health. We want to be used by God. And I don't, I don't know if, 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 if God will fully heal me of this thing. I don't know. I have faith. But I will tell you this. If he does not heal me, if he does not deliver me all the way through, if this is where it ends, I will continue to trust God. I will continue to preach Jesus Christ. I will continue to preach that he is a healer and a deliverer because I am a man of faith. I have strong faith. I have strong faith. I stand before you preaching right now with a fever. My legs are aching. My body is hurting. But I got strong faith. Because you don't know what strong faith looks like until somebody can preach to you in the midst of the fiery furnace. Until somebody can preach to you while they're going through the valley. You don't know what faith looks like until somebody can preach to you from their deathbed. God allows Satan <sighs> to test certain believers. And I think it's an honor that God saw me fit. God saw me worthy to go through this test, to go through this trial. I will not complain. I will not give the devil glory. I will give God glory. Because we say it all the time, but we don't mean it. But I say it and I mean it. For God I live and for God I die. Can I get an amen? Amen. Why would God say yes? Here's a question that I need to ask you, and I just want to throw it out there, and I'll come back to it. Why would God say yes, Freedom Church, to Satan's request 
to test certain believers. Why would God let the devil touch Job, take his kids, inflict his body? Why would God let Satan inflict Paul with a disease and a sickness that would never ever go away? Well, Luke 22 and 31 through 34 holds our answer. It says, Jesus said, and when Jesus talks, you need to listen. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, he says, listen to me, son. Listen to me now. Satan has demanded. Y'all better pay attention to this. Satan didn't ask. I wish I had a church. He didn't, he didn't ask politely. He, he demanded that he have the right to test. And you need to know that Satan has the right to demand to test you. You can jump and shout all you want. Satan got a right to demand. And I'm going to tell you, the more you jump, the more you shout, the higher you get on the devil's radar. The more faithful you are to church and the more faithful you are to Christ, the higher you rise up on the devil's radar. The more you fight through whatever the devil's throwing your way, the higher you get up. And that's why some of y'all are going through hell right now. Because you would not quit. You would not back down. You would not stop. And the devil says, oh, I see you. You're on my radar now. And I'm about to demand the right to test you. And he says he wants to do what a farmer does. He wants to separate you like the wheat from the husk. And I don't know if you know anything about wheat, but if you take wheat in your hand and if you rub it, I got a church in here today. If you rub it side to side, something happens. The, the wheat falls away from the stem. I wish I had a church. Good God Almighty. The wheat falls away from the stem through the rubbing. And some of y'all, this is where you are right now. The devil has you in his hands and he's throwing you back and forth. He's throwing you to the left and throwing you to the right. He's messing with your finances. He's messing with your family. He's messing with everything because he's trying to see if he can separate you from God. He's trying to see if he can separate you from the faith. He's trying to see if he can separate you from God. But we read in the Bible, what shall separate me from the love of God? Death, sickness, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. And if this is where you are right now, I'm telling you to hold on a little while longer. I'm telling you to keep the faith. I'm telling you to cling to God because if you fall away from God, you think it's bad with God. I wish I had a church. You think it's rough with God. Try living this life without God. Somebody say, I will not fall away no matter what I go through. Satan has to ask for permission. Watch this right here. Before he can test a child of God. Satan has to ask for what? Permission before he can test a child of God. My leg's getting stronger. Satan has to ask for permission. Satan has to ask for permission before he can test a child of God. You ought to take glory in there. Watch this. Not so for sinners. Not so for sinners. What that means is that if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, the devil can attack you anytime he gets ready. The devil can bum rush you without asking God for permission. That's why some of y'all keep going through one thing over another thing over another thing because you have no protection. That means that sometimes the devil will ask to test us and God will say, not today, not today, not today. They've been through enough. Not today. They passed your last test. Not today. But when you don't have God as your Lord and Savior, the devil can hit you 365 days out of the year. Some of y'all be going through every day. I challenge you today that if Jesus is not your protection, old folks used to say it this way, Jesus, be a fence. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus be a fence yeah. all around me yeah. every day. Do you know what a fence does? Do you know what a fence does? Yes, a fence keep folks out your yard. I wish I had a... Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. A fence will slow down somebody trying to get to you. Yeah. And if you don't know Jesus, you better say, Lord, be a fence around me because I'm tired of the devil. Not even having to ask for permission to mess with my family. Not even having to ask for permission 
to touch my body. I'm glad he had to ask for permission. I'm glad he had to ask for permission. Here's why I'm glad I hear that. I, he, I'm glad he had to ask for permission because if God tells him yes and he gets permission, when God tell him stop, he got to quit. I wish I had a church. Can I go deeper? First Corinthians 10 and 13 says this, every test, how many tests? Every test, every test that you have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. This is good, y'all. But God keeps his promises and he will not allow, hear me Freedom Church, you to be tested beyond your power to remain firm. If you quit on God, it wasn't because you had to, it's because you chose to. If you gave up on God, it wasn't because he put more on you than you can bear. It was because you did not tap into the power that was within you because God says he's going to give you the power to remain firm. You're looking at a man that's remaining firm today. He says at the time you are put to the test, he will give you, he will give you. He will give you. In other words, you didn't have it because you didn't need it because you weren't going through nothing. What God Almighty? But when you go through something, God says, here, let me give you some strength. I see what you're going through. In other words, while the enemy is attacking you, God is sneaking strength into you. While the enemy is fighting you, God says, here, let me give you a little something to help you make it through. See, that's why we can't lose with the stuff we use says he will give you the strength to escape it. Endure it. No, 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 maybe, 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 maybe my reading is off. He will give you the strength to go around it. No, maybe, 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 maybe I'm off. He will give you the strength to get out of it. See, this is why some of y'all need to check your faith today. Because if your faith is only limited to a miracle, you in trouble. If your faith is only limited to you praying and things turning around immediately, you in trouble. You got to have strong faith that says, if it don't get no better, I ain't going nowhere. You got to have strong faith that says, even if it gets worse, I'm here to stay. Even if it gets rough, I'm here to stay. Why? Because I got strong faith. Somebody say, I've got to have strong faith. Is anybody getting this word? Yeah. Let me hear you give God praise if you're getting something out of it. Yeah. Luke 22 and 32, as we go deep into this conversation between Jesus and Simon, he says, but Simon, Jesus talking to him, he says, Simon, listen, son, I have prayed that your faith will be strong. I have prayed that your faith will be strong be strong. Do you know that Jesus prays for us? Do you know that Jesus is the mediator between us and God? Do you know that Jesus is rooting for us? That's why you should always have confidence in God because he tells Simon, I pray that your faith will be strong. But watch this. Jesus inadvertently tells Simon that he's not going to make it. Because he says, I prayed that your faith will be strong. And then all, in one sentence he flows and says, and when you have come back to me. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. I ain't going nowhere. I'm here with you, Jesus. Jesus says, listen to me. I prayed that your faith will be strong. But listen, when you have come back to me. You know what that means? You're going to leave me. You're going to leave me. Your faith is going to fail. He says, when you come back to me, help others. And I just want to encourage some of you today who have left God. And I'm not talking about left him in the faith, but you strayed away. You have not been what you used to be. You have not been doing what you've been called to do. Listen, ain't no shame in your game. God says, when you come back, you got work to do. When you come back, you got an assignment. When you come back, you need to tell folks you don't want to leave God. When you come back, you need to tell folks you want to be faithful when you come back you need to tell somebody ain't nothing out there because I went back out there and I came back here and I recognized I never should have left I wish I had a church who am I preaching to that's got an assignment today don't be ashamed come back and strengthen 
and help others. Question today is how strong is your faith? Don't answer out loud. Keep it to yourself because you may be wrong. How strong is your faith? The second question to that is how do you know how strong your faith is? You don't know how strong you are until you go to the gym and put them weights on that rack and get up under that bench and sometimes you'll be so surprised. Come on, brothers. Come on, brothers. Any brothers know what I'm talking about? Before you went to the gym, you felt strong. You know you were strong. You're a country boy. You can pick up a, a waffle. You can pick up a pancake. You can pick up a fork. You felt real strong, but there's something about the gym free that will give you divine revelation. I messed around when I first started going to the gym some 10 or 15 years ago. No, I was strong. I put that 45 pound bar up there and coach, I loaded them on. Two plates, four plates, four or five. I say put them up, three plates. I got six 45s on there. They ain't never been to the gym. I got up under there. I ain't had no spotter. Why? Because I'm strong. I ain't asked nobody to help me because I'm strong. And I slid my butt up under that mess and I got it up. And I'm telling you, that's all I did. I got it up. And I got it up and I didn't have it up long. I got, I'm telling you something, divine, I got it up and divine revelation say, boy, don't you, don't you bring that thing down. Don't you bring that thing down. You about to embarrass yourself. I put that thing back on the rack, and now you know how you get it, you're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I walked around the gym, just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I said, take them plates off, they'll they take them off, they'll take them off. Why? Because sometimes, hear me, church, we think we are stronger than we really are. You thought you could go over that woman's house and not get in trouble because you thought you were stronger. I ain't getting no amen on that. You thought you were stronger than you really. You thought you could go out with that brother and go and have a nightcap because you thought you were stronger than. I ain't got no claps in here. You thought you could hang out with your weed buddies because you thought you were stronger than you really are. And I want to tell you something, that oftentimes we are not as strong as we think we are. Amen. Nobody want to say amen to that. Amen. I'll tell you to your face, you're not as strong sometimes as you think you are. Amen. Until you've gone through enough tests. Until you've gone through enough trials. I'll tell you this, until you've fallen on your face two or three times. Then you start to recognize, I ain't strong in that area. You got to know where you're strong in. You got to know where you're weak in so that you don't play yourself. Somebody say, don't play yourself. Here's a question you want to ask. What do you do when you go through the seasons where it's your turn to go through? Luke 22 and 33 says, Peter said, here's Peter's response. I'll get ready to close. Listen to Peter because Peter sounds like us. Peter says to God, now you would think Peter would hush. Because he's talking to Jesus. And when Jesus tell you you ain't ready, you just need to say, yes, Lord. Right, but because Peter is overconfident in his own strength, Peter corrects Jesus. says, Lord, I don't know. What are you talking about? Lord, I'm ready to go with you. Watch this. To the jail. Right. Ain't never been to jail before. I'm ready to go with you to the jail. And then he goes deeper. I'm even ready to die. Watch this with you. Can I tell you something? Be careful what you say. Yeah. You don't have to clap, but you better hear me because church folks do a lot of talking. We do a lot of declaration about what we're going to do. I see it all the time. Lord, I'll be with you to the end. Lord, I'm going to be with you no matter what comes. Hell or high water. But when the test hits, when the test hits, when the bottom falls out, I, I ain't got no church in here. When you ain't got a dime to your name, when don't nobody like you, when they lay you off on your job, it's amazing how we do not act the way we say we was going to act because we lie to ourselves about our strength. Now you know that when Peter went through, Peter didn't do none of this. And Peter really thought he was ready, church. I'm not judging Peter. In his heart, Minister Watkins, he really believed he was ready. 
just like some of y'all in your heart, you really believe you read it. But let me tell you something, there are things that you have to go through and you believe you read it, but you will not know until you go through it. You won't know, I'm telling you, folk love to talk all the time about what they gonna do and what they ain't gonna do. You don't know until you go through it, until somebody slap you in your face, you don't know what you gonna do. Now you think you might slap them back, but you might be surprised. The Holy Ghost might come upon you and you might say, you know what? Peace be with you, my brother. Amen. That would surprise a lot of you. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes you don't know what's in you until you are squeezed. Somebody say, I got to be squeezed. So I know what's in me. Can I go deeper? Verse 34, Jesus replied to Peter. Jesus don't play the radio. Peter, I'm going to tell you this right here, boy. I'm going to tell you this right here, that before a rooster crows tomorrow morning, player, you going to deny me. Not once, not twice, three times a lady. You know I had to say it. You going to deny me three times, homeboy. You going to deny me three times. And here's what's funny. The first time Peter denied him, he had to remember what he told Jesus. The first time Peter denied him, he had to remember the words that came out of his mouth, but he wasn't as strong as he thought he was. Because to accept the fact, to acknowledge the fact that he knew Jesus, guess what that meant? He was going to have to go to jail and die with Jesus. The very thing he said he was ready to do when it came time for the rubber to hit the road and make skid marks, he didn't make none. And we do a whole lot of talking. Be careful what you say. Be careful when you tell God, Lord, I'll do anything for you. Be careful when you, when you make a promise to God. If you get me out of this situation, I will serve you. Be careful. Because let me tell you something. The devil is listening to what we say. I'm going to say it again. The devil is listening to what we say. And when the devil listens to what we say, he says, okay, that will be your test. You are going to be tested by two things things and I've told you this before you're gonna be tested for what you say and you're gonna be tested for what you hear that's why some of you are in trouble now because you've heard these sermons that's why some of you are in trouble now you ain't did nothing wrong quit thinking you did something wrong church some of y'all are going through because you're finally doing something right some of you are going through because you're finally praising God you're finally loving God you're finally forgiving your enemies you're finally trying to live a nickel worth of dog meat but we always think, oh, what am I doing wrong? No, it's because you're finally doing something right. Because the devil don't bother you when you're doing Good God Almighty. The devil ain't going to bother you when you're doing wrong because you're headed for self-destruction. But when you start doing right, the devil says, I got to stop you. Because if I don't stop you, you might inspire somebody else to do right. If I don't stop you, you might inspire somebody else to raise their hands. If I don't stop you, you might inspire somebody else to trust God. Peter's faith failed him. His talk was strong, but his faith was weak. And I want to ask you today to look in the mirror and ask yourself, how many promises have you made God? Appreciate the clap over here. How many promises have you made God, but you haven't kept them? Amen. Think about it. Think about it. Come on, come on, come on. I know some of y'all got so many you can't remember. Right. Promises after promises after promises. God, if you bless me with, with, with some money, I'll tithe. God, if you bless me with an increase, I'm going to bless the church. I'm going to bless the pastor. I'm going to bless everybody. Amen. And then God put it right there in your hand. And you go to sweating like a crackhead. <laughs> you go to sweating like a crackhead because you're like, oh, Lord, I ain't never had this much money. And you forget the promises of God. And then you wonder why it'd be such a long time for God bless you again. I wish I had a church. You wonder why it'd be such a long time. Because let me tell you something about God. God is serious about his promises. God's serious. When we make a vow to him, God is serious. That's why I'm going to say this and you can do what you want to do with it. Y'all got to stop getting married thinking you can get a divorce when things get rough because you made a vow to God. Love it, hate it, do whatever you want to do with it. 
You made a vow to God and we get married and divorced, married and divorced, married and divorced. Amen. I ain't getting no amen now. And I've been there. We've been there. But what we learn to do is to go back to God. What we learn to do is say, God, we ready to get rid of each other. We tired of each other. We ready to separate. But God, we made a vow to you. And we gonna ask you to fix this thing because if you don't fix it, it won't be fixed. So I ain't getting no clap on that. When you got saved, you made a vow to God. Hold your seat. When you got saved, you made a vow to God to obey his word. Say, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Tithing is in his word. So when you got saved, you made us a, a subliminal vow to tithe. Offering is in his word. I ain't getting no amen. Forgiving your enemies is in his. Oh, I ain't getting no church in here today. Come on. Giving folks a second chance is in his word. Telling the truth is in his word. The liars won't clap on that one. <laughs> Being faithful, where it at? <laughs> Who am I preaching to? See, we don't understand that when you sign up for salvation, it's more than you just going to heaven. You sign a covenant with God. You agree with everything in his word. From Genesis to Revelations, your salvation says, Father, I agree with your word and I seek to obey your word so that I might have good success. Give God praise. Now y'all can relax. I ain't telling you you got to go back and marry somebody you done divorced. Cause some of y'all got to go marry three people, so ain't, that ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. What I am telling you to do today is that we got to get a better understanding of what we say in terms of what comes out of our mouth. Let me tell you what strong faith does. Strong faith helps you hold on to Jesus no matter the test. That's how the Hebrew boys went through the fire. How you go through the fire, and this is the words you say, if God deliver us, we ain't gonna bow. But then Tammy says, if God don't deliver us. See, that's, that's what the church is missing. We're missing the second part. If God don't heal me, I'm still gonna praise him. If God don't give me no more money, I'm still gonna give my tithe and my offering. If God don't increase me, I'm still going to praise him. See, y'all pray the first part. But you ain't got strong faith until you pray the whole thing. Why would God say yes to Satan's request to test certain believers? Because faith is something you have to demonstrate. Faith ain't something you get to talk about. Because anybody can talk about it. Faith is like love. It has to be demonstrated. Somebody can tell you all day, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. But until it's demonstrated, and when that love is demonstrated on a large scale, you start to get a beautiful picture of how much that person loves you. Well, faith is the same way. If you got faith, you're going to have to demonstrate it. Let me translate it. You're going to have to put up or shut up. You're going to have to show and prove. You're going to have to go through the test and pass the test. You're going to have to say, Lord, I love you in the midst of this situation. Why? Because it's something that has to be demonstrated and it's something that you have to demonstrate. You want to know why you got to demonstrate it? Because it's the only way to get a demon straight. I wish I had a church. I wish I had a church. I wish I had a church. The only way to get the devil off of you is to demonstrate your faith. And when you demonstrate your faith, you mess around and get all the demons straight and they know you love God. They know you're faithful. They know you ain't going nowhere. They know you're doing more than just talking. They know you're not like the others who always talk, but when the heat is on, they're quickly gone. Give God praise if you got it. I'm not telling you to praise me. I'm telling you to give God praise if you got it. 
Come on, give him praise if you got it. I'm talking about in your spirit. If you got it in your spirit and you're not going to let anything shake you from God, you're not going to allow anything to take your testimony. You're not going to allow anything to change your praise. Give God praise. For God I live and for God I die. Because we've got to have strong faith.